Hey guys and welcome to a new video. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a chair and a broken chair within Blender. I'm going to use Substance Designer to create a hive map for the broken pieces and I'm going to use Substance Painter to texture the chair. Um, and I also use the Substance Designer for the wood texture. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So yeah, the first thing that I did was create the broken pieces within Substance Designer. I've used a broken board, ge broken wood generator created by Dennis. Um, I will post a link in the description, and that gives you the possibility to create uh, some very cool hype maps that looks like broken pieces, broken wood pieces. Um, I've just uh, made some adjustments to it so it looks like a, it's a square um, and not a rectangle. So yeah, I'm going to export some different kind of um, hype maps. I'm changing some settings right now. You can see it's just when you, when you uh, change the gradient, it changes the, the cuts in the wood. Um, so I can export hype maps so I can use it within Blender for my displacement modifiers. So yeah, within Blender I've already created a scene that I'm going to um, work out in Unity. but. As you can see, I've already created some reference chairs that I'm, I, I want to like to replace with the uh, the ones I'm going to create now. So I just um, place them in a new layer, so I, I, it's just an empty layer, so we only see the chair. And as you can see, I've already created some uh, wood pieces, so I'm dragging them to the left so I can create a new one. So just create a new plane, a subdivider multiple times, and just uh, put a displacement modifier on it. Just give it a texture and then you can just select the height map that I have exported from the Substance Designer um, program. So hold on, I'm just going to open my height map. It will take a while. And as you can see, uh, you've got already some results, but you have to increase the strength. I'm going to increase it by uh, three. I have the best results getting tree and I've also created a inverted version of my hive map so I have um, the other part of the broken pieces so I've already exported that one out so I can just drag it into a new displacement modifier and just get the new texture or the new hive map and as you can see just hold on uh, just increase the strength by tree again so as you can see, it's just the inverted version of the first broken pieces, so they fit together. It's They won't fit together perfectly and I have to mirror it first, but it's just that imperfection, so it, it's always, it's, it never should fit 100% together because it's a broken piece. Um, as you can see, it doesn't fit right now, I have to mirror it first. mirror on the y-axis so as you can see it will fit right now not 100% perfectly but it's a broken piece so it won't be so yeah we will create the broken pieces low poly uh, later on but first we go into model the chair um, I've already got some chairs from the reference from my scene so that's just so I basically know the height and the width of the chair that, I'm, that, that fits within my machine so I'm just going to create a cube and I'm going to create the high detail chair to fit in my game. So I'm just going to place it right in a position just, it, just so, so it just fits the height and the width uh, of the chair the leg himself so it won't be out of proportion. Just place it in, at the top and just drag out the, the height from, from the cube. Um, something like this. Just make it a little bit smaller to look at if it's the same width at the bottom as the chair so, so yeah just hold it straight because the curve um, we will make it curved later on so just hold the cube straight as straight as possible um, yeah something like this so that's basically the first leg so I'm now going to add a an edge loop so I can create a, a curved version of it so just about seven edges should be enough something like this So yeah, that's basically the first leg. Just drag the broken pieces to the right. Um, just like the, the middle edge, 
and turn on your proportional editing and just um, drag it a little bit to the right and just scroll with your mouse wheel just to get the best result just increase your brush size or your proportional editing size because if you decrease it too much you will see it deformed a little bit uh, at the top at the bottom of the chair so yeah something like this you have that nice curvy look on your leg maybe it's too much but I think it's it's good enough for this chair so yeah and place it just right back at the position and yeah now you can duplicate the the, the leg to the right so you have two legs so you won't have to model the other one I'm going to duplicate it also to the front so you just cut off the leg himself just combine them together and cut the faces um, so you won't have to model the the legs at the front I'm going to flip them inwards so you have a, a little bit of a curvy chair so it looks a little bit more realistic Always use some um, re reverence, some, some pictures from Google or anywhere else so you have a reverence how a chair looks like so it won't look like a weird chair. Always uh, keep the reality in real. So I'm cutting these faces. So yeah, now uh, oh, I have to fit the... No, it looks, it looks okay. So no. So yeah, that's how I just very simple created the legs for the chair by using the proportional editing. Uh, in the future, I will create more. I will add more details to it. I'm just going to speed up my tutorial now a little bit, the, just to skip the modeling part. So yeah, the modeling part is now done, so I just duplicate the chair. So I've got now like three chairs, one normal and two chairs with some broken pieces. So I'm going to add the broken pieces right now. But the first thing I have to do is um, duplicate the high poly version and create the low poly version. So I can later on bake the high poly normals to the low poly version. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to delete the plane first and just select the faces and delete them. So I'm going to speed up this process right now. So yeah, the next thing I'm going to do is and duplicate this high poly piece to the yeah, to the left. So I'm now going to add the decimate uh, modifier and decrease the amount um, very much. So you have like maybe 600 faces. That's already to the high. That's already very high. Just make it about 500, maybe 400. Um, I'm just flattening the uh, left and right side because you can see it's now pretty much fucked up. Um, it's just a little bit too deformed. I'm just going to fix some bugs. It's not really a bug, but sometimes you have vertices uh, clipping each other, just dragging them to the left or to the right so it will fit more perfectly. So I'm going to speed up this process right now. So right now we have a very clean low poly version of the high poly broken wood piece. Um, so now I can just get it into position of my chair, so I will speed up this process. So yeah, I've just deleted some faces to get it right into the position of the position where I want the broken piece. I'm just going to extrude the most uh, lower edge uh, so I can just get a bevel onto this piece just like I have uh, a bevel on my chair um, just select the edges at the corners 
So hold on, I'm just going to select them all. And I'm going to bevel them by 0.8. I'm always using my num keys because it's more precise than just using your mouse wheel. So yeah, now we have a cool low poly uh, broken piece on my chair and the next thing I have to do is get the high poly just right into position as the low poly version so I can export it as an uh, OBJ or uh, just like an FBX so a substance painter can just bake the high poly look perfectly onto the low poly cell. So I'm just getting it right into the position. So I've just speeded up this process. So as you can see, I've just uh, have some multiple chairs with all their broken pieces. So as this chair got some uh, got the back uh, the back broken, um, while the other chair just got only one leg broken and so on. So I've just created some different kind of versions. And at the separate layer, I've got the uh, high poly broken pieces, so I can export them all um, just as a OBJ. So I can bake the high poly to the low poly within Substance Painter. Um, within 3D code I create my um, UV, UV maps um, just for the normal chair it's not pretty that uh, much usable you can also create the UV map within Blender pretty easy but the problem was with the um, broken pieces you just have to generate some auto UVs and that's basically pretty easy within 3D code so that's why I use 3D code I'm only going to use it for the broken pieces um, yeah so I've just exported it to substance painter and I've created uh, I've added my wood texture that I've created in designer maybe later on in another tutorial I will show you how to create a cool wood texture um, but for this this tutorial, I'm just um, I'm not going to show you guys right now. So yeah, that's basically how I've created the chair within uh, Blend and Substance Painter and Designer. So yeah, I'm just going to export these maps and I'm going to use it in Unity. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you is how I've created the uh, high poly to the low poly. Um, it's pretty easy because I've just exported the high poly. Uh, high poly pieces uh, as an OBJ file I thought or maybe it was an FBX it doesn't really matter it's just in a 3D file and within Substance Painter you can just uh, click on the bake settings and just make sure you have selected the normal option uh, make sure it's the same size as your UV coordinates and just select your high poly, um, high poly file so yeah just hit bake um, I've uh, added the normal at a separate layer so I can just adjust them so I can create some masks and just paint where I want the normals to show. Um, so yeah, that's basically why I've created this chair. If you've got any questions, just please leave it into the comments and I will see you guys in a later video. Bye!